Our next founder is William Floyd. Now, this article that I wrote was my 1,000th article. Yay, I need a sound effect where everyone claps. This is my 1,000th article, and I've been saving William Floyd to be my 1,000th article since I wrote my first article because I used to volunteer at the William Floyd estate. Before I was doing any of this stuff, I was a young man, uh, fresh out of school, had some free time, and I, I just loved the American Revolution then, as I did now. And I volunteered at his estate on Long Island. He is the only signer of the Declaration of Independence from New York whose house still stands. And in fact, two of his houses still stand, and we will get to that. But first, let's talk about his life. So at just 20 years old, I, well before the revolution, William Floyd's parents pass away. Uh, and he was 20 years old. They were older than that. But he was the oldest of their children, and he inherited uh, a plantation on Long Island and his siblings. He inherited responsibility of his siblings. Now, I do want to note, I said plantation on Long Island. New York, as we've discussed a lot recently, was a very interesting place during the American Revolution, especially most of the really wealthy people inherited, they were lords of feudal manors. Uh, and that is not... Uh, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, they inherited the manners, the manners from the Dutch a hundred years before the revolution, when the Dutch controlled New Netherlands, it became New York, and blah, blah, blah. Here we are. Now, William Floyd, he got from his parents uh, a pretty hefty estate, but it was a plantation in the style more of the South. Now, he never had the 800 slaves that people like uh, uh, Henry Middleton had, but he did have slaves on his plantation. They focused mostly on flax, actually, which could be used for many things. Uh, not only are flax seeds edible, but uh, you could use it to make certain linens and garments of that nature. Um, I, the, of course, just because he had less slaves doesn't make it any more right, but that is the situation they were in when the Revolutionary War uh, seems to be coming to fruition. Now, William Floyd became a leader in Suffolk County, New York, about uh, as the revolution's coming in. He, with his two brothers-in-laws, his sister, brothers-in-law, is it brothers-in-law or brother-in-laws? I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> so his brothers-in-law were Nathaniel Woodhull, who we spoke about recently, w would go on a long uh, cattle drive, an important early military man who was martyred to the cause early in the revolution, and was a cousin of Abraham Woodhull, who's head of the cult perspiring. And his other brother-in-law was Ezra Lahamindu, who would later go on to build uh, uh, Montauk Lighthouse, uh, which would be the first federally funded construction project. Uh, and they, the three of them with William Floyd, become really important to the cause in New York, especially on Long Island. And they choose William to go to Philadelphia for the first Continental Congress. He signs the Art the Continental Association. Uh, he goes back to New York. They send him back to Philadelphia. He would spend the majority of the war following along with the Continental Congress. He would go back for a year, or a year here, a year there to work in the New York State Senate, but primarily spent the whole time quietly sitting in Congress. He was not necessarily the best educated man. He was educated to run his plantation, but he wasn't the, didn't give him the, the golden opportunities that many of the other high level elite founders did receive. That being said, he was very studious. He listened to what was going on. He ends up also, uh, like uh, we spoke about, um, uh, Hopkinson, Francis Hopkinson, would work on the Navy board. He served on dozens of committees throughout the years, helping to establish the United States. And he did sign the Declaration of Independence, as I alluded to earlier today. Now, he, uh, his time in the Continental Congress, not only was the only, he was the only Long Island signer, one of only four New Yorkers to sign. But while he's away, in 1776, just after the, con the Declaration of Independence is signed, the British famously take Manhattan. But they also took with Long Island. And on Long Island was his house. And they took William Floyd's house that not only was it used as a place to house officers of the war, it was actually used as a stable. They used his house, which again is still there. You can go visit it if you're on Long Island. Uh, they used his house as a stable. Not great. Now, by the time the Revolutionary War ends, after seven years away, William Floyd can finally return home and go to his stable house and clean it up and it's kind of destroyed but they do save it as i said still there <laughs> they do save it but at this time when the war ends he actually buys some land on the mohawk river now this is not common uh what he does most people were investing in, in speculating in upstate new york and other lands around the young united states and many of them it did not work out for because they paid too much and couldn't sell it all blah 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 william floyd bought land and he improved it and he would go up there over the summers for several years improving it 
later he would move there, but before he moves there, he in 1789 is then elected as an inaugural member of the United States House of Representatives. He's one of the first people there. And while he's there, he's, he represents New York's first district, which now is basically just Long Island, but at the time was all of Long Island, including Brooklyn, then known as Kings County, Queens, and Staten Island, then and now technically known as Richmond County. So he not only represents Long Island, but is the inaugural representative for a huge portion of what we now consider New York City. As I said, uh, he loses re-election, actually, uh, as a Democratic Republican, and then he runs for Lieutenant Governor of New York alongside Robert Yates, who we discussed earlier was probably Brutus, uh, writing these anti-federalist articles, who then became Democratic Republicans, would later be Jeffersonian Republicans. Now, unfortunately, they lose that campaign, and then a few years later, Floyd moves to the wilderness, for lack of a better term, in upstate New York on the Mohawk River, where he improves things. Uh, and he actually lives long enough. He's one of the longest living declaration signers. And he uh, has a uh, he helps oversee the implementation of the Erie Canal in that area, really sponsors people to develop the land and bring that to fruition up there. And I should note that somewhere in the uh, behind me is the uh, Adams Jefferson letters. And there is one letter in there that always stuck with me. Um, John Adams finds out first that William Floyd dies. And at this point, Adams is about 90, Jefferson's in his 80s, and he writes, uh, the one quote I remember is in cat, uh, with an exclamation point, Floyd is dead. And, and it was a sad moment, of course, uh, a founder, an American founder, telling another American founder about the death of an American founder. Um, but they, he basically then carries on to say, we're fading fast. This is the end of the generation. This is the end of the generation. I can, he, you know, Adams could only hope that they did their best and what they did would succeed from here on out. Now, I do have this here. Of course, it's gotten covered in papers since we're sitting here. Uh, I'm going to pull this up. This is actually my training manual, and it's, uh, you can't see it because the lights are too bright. But I have my training manual from when I was, uh, uh, the brief time I spent as a volunteer at the Fire Island National Seashore. Now, it's mostly like how to run the parks <laughs> uh, and not a lot of great information on the founders uh, on William Floyd and his family themselves, but I thought it'd be fun to have here. I was gonna go through it the other day, but again, it's operational procedures. <laughs> not what I remembered. So that is a brief overview of the life of American founder, William Floyd.